Bonsoir, good evening. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for your patience. We had a little glitch, but we're here now. Uh, hopefully you're here to learn about English at Collège Jean de Brébeuf. My name is Melissa White, and this is my wonderful colleague, Jeremy Fuster. Uh, we're going to be sharing the presentation, so, uh, and we always feel that as part of the open house that it's good for the parents and students to hear what the English teachers sound like, right Jeremy? Yes. Yes, so we speak the English. So we're yes. speak the English tonight. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Uh, so if we can go to the next slide. Uh, just to give you, we're going to have about a 15 minute presentation, maybe a little shorter, but we want to talk to you about the English levels that are at Bray Buff, uh, the number of English classes that students have each week, uh, how we classify students because we do have the English, different English levels, as well as our pedagogical approach and some of the materials that we use. Uh, and we also have a lot of extracurricular activities in English, which we find uh, students really enjoy. One of the big questions that parents often have is English post Brebeuf. Once you've studied here uh, for five years, we'll also introduce you to the English teachers. And at that point, we'll invite you to submit any questions you might have through the question and answer section on the, uh, the online meeting. So without further ado, let's talk about the English levels. If we can go to the next slide. And the next slide. There we go. So we have different. Uh, num we have a different number of groups uh, on the boys' side and the girls' side. Uh, so on the boys' the girls side, because we have four groups of boys, we have four levels of English. Uh, we go from regular to intermediate, high intermediate, and advanced. All of them are focused on using English in the classroom. The teachers all speak English to the students. The students are encouraged to stay in English uh, and to speak English as much as possible, if not 100% of the time. And you can see there's kind of a gradation going from regular to advanced at the boys' school, depending on where the student is best fits within uh, our levels of English. And if we go to the next slide, uh, on the girls' side, because we have three groups of girls, we have three levels of English. So they do pair up with the boys' levels. So we have regular, high intermediate, and advanced. So again, it's not a question of whether English is used or not in the classroom, but it's more a question of uh, what types of texts are look at, looked at and things like that. And Jeremy will be talking about that a little bit later. So if we move on to the number of English classes uh, per week, uh, as I hope maybe you found out already that Brebeuf is on a five-day schedule. So if we go to the next slide, from secondary one to secondary four, the students have three periods of 45 minutes a week in English. And in secondary five, we have four 50-minute periods per week. Um, so I think that's enough talking from me, so I'm going to turn it over to the wonderful Mr. Fuster. He's going to talk to you a little bit about how we classify students for the English levels. Okay, we can move to the, the next slide, uh, and then the next slide. Um, <clears throat> we classify our Sec 1 students who are coming in uh, to the college uh, before the first day of classes. Uh, it's jumped around the, the classification dates over the past couple years due to the pandemic, but we've been able to successfully classify everybody. Uh, the students come in and they write a test. Uh, the exam evaluates uh, reading comprehension, listening comprehension, grammar, uh, and writing. Um, they write their exam. It usually takes about an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, and Based on the results of that classification exam, the students are placed in the, in the levels that Melissa had, uh, had previously mentioned. Uh, I should say that you know, classification evaluations are always ongoing, and some students who you know, work really hard or improve a lot can move up uh, over the course of their time at Brebeuf, so it's not a static thing, but, uh, but that's how we initially place our students. Um, there are constraints, um, depending on class sizes as well. Uh, and usually students are informed before class starts uh, where their English class uh, and what level uh, they will be placed in. Uh, so if you move to the next slide, I'm going to be talking a little bit as well once they <coughs> are classified and they are in their classes, uh, what kind of approach we have as teachers uh, here at Brebeuf. Uh, so we'll move to the next slide. 
Um, generally, uh, across all of our different levels, um, we have some similarities. I'll discuss those and talk a little bit about some differences as well. Um, primarily, we use a lot of authentic English texts uh, from Sec 1 all the way until Sec 5. Uh, it could be novels, short stories, uh, essays, newspaper articles, poems. Uh, all of those different things are brought to our class for discussion, uh, for consideration, for oral presentations. Um, students get to write, uh, they get to demonstrate their comprehension and create their own works as well uh, using English all the time. Uh, and we focus on all kinds of different types of English, um, some of which, you know, as it says on the slide, academic writing, creative writing, technical writing. Uh, frankly, sometimes I have to teach my students how to write a good email. Uh, so, <laughs> or a CV. Uh, or a CV, <laughs> yeah. or a text. Anyways, um, one of the main commonalities between all of our English uh, le uh, levels, uh, regardless uh, of what they are, is the use of English at all times. Um, so we have a lot of resources in our classroom. We use dictionaries, English French dictionaries. We have grammar resources and students are encouraged uh, in their English class to speak English uh, at all times. Um, and the last point is an exploration of English culture. Um, a lot of that is done through things that I previously mentioned. Uh, it could be literary culture. It could be journalistic culture, uh, it could be popular culture. Uh, we try to bring all of these things into one, I guess, grab students' attention in our classes, uh, and two, to sort of expose them to something that they might not have already uh, been exposed to within you know, the broad Anglosphere, if you want. <laughs> uh, and I guess we'll move to the next um, topic. There's a couple slides here just to give you a sense of some of the books that we read. Um, there's a bit of a split in between cycle one and cycle two. Uh, in cycle one and sec one and two, we try to use, a, we do use a lot of, I guess, youth fiction um, for the younger students, uh, stories that they can relate to and that is at an appropriate level for them. And then in the second level, if you look at the, we can, we can uh, move yeah, a slide ahead, ahead as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's the, the classics, the animal farms, the Lord of the Flies, the Shakespeare's, all of those things get taught uh, in our classes. And depending on the teacher, um, the genre will change. Some like theater, some like science fiction, uh, some like Canadian literature. Uh, so it's our goal that by the time the student finishes at Brebeuf, they've been exposed to a variety of different authors and a variety of different uh, genres as well. So I think we'll move to the next. Oh, there's more books. There you go. Uh, you can never have too many books. Too many books even more books. Uh, <laughs> Anyways, uh, you're going to talk about yeah, the extracurricular. Yeah, no, we do teach a lot of books, though. It's yeah. hard to keep track of all of them. Of but, yeah. uh, so for extracurricular activities, if we move to the next slide, uh, we're very proud of the fact that we, as of this year, have a newspaper for every level. So we have a Sec 1 and Sec 2 newspaper. We have a secondary three and four newspaper, and we have a secondary five newspaper, uh, which is kind of my pet project, and I'm very proud of the students. It's all student-driven, and uh, if you're interested, the actually the latest issue from last year is available on uh, Braybook's website. I'm very proud of the students and what they created. Uh, so we have those newspapers. Uh, we have a writing contest every year that all of the students, no matter what English level they're in, are invited to participate in and the writing contest is divided by their English level. So they are competing against students who have a similar English level. We also have conversation classes. Uh, we're hoping in a year or two to have a quiz club as well. And we also have English theater in secondary four and five as well, which we're, we're very proud of our, uh, our English theater troupe, which is called Stage Struck Productions. Um, so moving on, English post spray buff. So if we go to the next slide, the question that we often get in the live version of Open House is, well, can my son or daughter go to McGill Medical School or go to Stanford or study in England? And the really short answer is yes. Uh, we have students from all of our levels of English that go on to study at English SEJEPs. English universities, whether it's in Ontario, we just had students leave for British Columbia, into the States, uh, also uh, in Europe as well. 
it's really a question of student motivation. And so we're always very proud to see our students improve over the five years. And there are students, like I said, from every level of English that tend to move on to English Sejep or and or university if that's what their, their, their goals include. Uh, and beyond post-secondary, we still hear back from old students who are now working in a bilingual environment or in an English environment and uh, are, well, as you said, you sometimes teach them how to write emails or CVs, so they're, they're grateful for, for the experience they've had in English during their time at Brebeuf. Uh, so Jeremy, I'm going to turn it back over to you to give a quick little bio. You can have, we have some pictures of our wonderful colleagues and uh, maybe I can talk about well, we can, yeah. Well, yeah, you go, okay, because well, Julie's start. first. Yeah, okay. go ahead. Yeah. So we're just going to quickly, we're not a huge department. There are seven of us. So just to give you some names and faces and a little like brief, brief, brief uh, summary of who these people are who might potentially be teaching your sons and daughters. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, Julie O'Reilly, uh, my wonderful office mate, yeah. has been at this uh, school for since 2003 teaching, and she was also a student here at one point. Uh, in her distant past, uh, <laughs> focusing on American young. Uh, She's going to hate you for yeah, that. Sorry. Uh, adult, young, American and young adult uh, literature, and she's a brave with alumna, and she's currently teaching SEC 1, 3, and 4. Uh, moving on to the next slide. Who is that person? <laughs> familiar. <laughs> Melissa White uh, has been here since 2010, uh, focusing on Canadian and modern literature. Melissa is a jack of all trades. She's run an inn, she's run a restaurant. She basically runs like the English department. Um, so, you know, she's a wonderful person, great uh, teacher, and she's teaching currently secondary three and five. Uh, Mr. Jeremy Cohen also has been here since 2010. Uh, he's really into science fiction and Gothic literature. Uh, he's a self-published author and currently teaches sec one, two, and four. Uh, next slide is our, our, our Carolyn uh, Gustini. Uh, has been here since 2014, uh, teaches young adult literature and British literature. Uh, she's fluently trilingual, uh, Montrealer, uh, teaching secondary one, two, and three. Next slide is uh, me. I am, uh, I'm, that's me, uh, since, here to, since 2015. Uh, I focus on South Asian literature, uh, Shakespeare and Sec 5. Uh, I did a lot of graduate work in anthropology in a previous incarnation. Uh, and so I bring that to my, uh, my teaching. Uh, Elisa Chiamaro has been here since 2017, uh, focusing on Shakespeare and theater. Uh, she has a background in Sejak English assessments and is teaching uh, Sec 1, 2, and 5. And finally, is it yep, finally? There's finally uh, yeah, there's finally, yeah. Yuki Shinobe, uh, who has been here since 2016, uh, likes to focus on current events and current events, sorry, and British literature. Uh, she's also a translator and teaches Sec 2, 3, and 4 in our department. And that's everybody who teaches English uh, <laughs> at high school here in Brebeuf. So we would invite you uh, at this point, because I know we kind of whipped through a lot of things. If you have any particular questions that you would like to, uh, to ask to us, and Melissa's going to grab the computer, you'll have to type them in. And uh, hopefully, they're not going to be too hard. No, no hard questions tonight, no. Um, OK, so yes, we'll give you a few minutes to do that. And we will see what comes up. The sound. Okay. The sound is really cutting in and so out. So they had problems with the sound. It seems all of the questions have to do what? with the sound. What? Which is a question what? I cannot answer. Pardon? Okay. Uh, but if anyone has any questions about the English program, we would be happy to address them. Okay, uh, or you can email uh, via, uh, via email and we'd be happy to reply as well. So 
Um, I'm not sure, I'm looking at our tech team, if we want to keep going, if there's questions, no. All right, so listen, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to seeing some of your children next year at Bray Have a great evening. Thank, thank you, bye-bye.